story five of christmas stories from french and spanish by antoinette ogden this librivox recording is in the public domain story five the princess and the ragamuffin from the spanish of benito perez galdos one pacarito mahayas was a great character he stood a trifle over two feet from the ground and had just turned his seventh year his skin was tanned by the sun and the wind and his wizened face suggested a dwarf rather than a child his eyes adorned with long eyelashes that looked like black wires were full of vitality and resplendent with mischief his mouth was amazing in its ugliness and his ears strangely like those of a fawn seemed to have been attached to his face rather than grown there he was dressed in a shirt of every possible shade of grime and a pair of patchwork trousers upheld by a single suspender in the winter he wore a coat which he had inherited from his grandfather the sleeves had been cut off at the elbow and pacorito considered it a handsome fit as overcoats go a rag which aspired to be a muffler was wound like a snake round and round his neck and on his head he wore a cap which he had picked up at the rostral he had little use for shoes which he considered in the light of a hindrance neither did he wear stockings having a great aversion to the roughness of the threads pacorito's ancestors could not have been more illustrious his father accused of having attempted to make his way into a house through the drain went to cuta for a change of climate and died there his mother a great lady who for many years kept a chestnut stand in the cava de san miguel had also fallen somehow into the hands of the authorities and after much ado with judges and notaries had repaired to the alcala jail pacorito had one sister but this last relative had deserted her post at the tobacco factory and flown to Sevilla in amorous pursuit of an artillery officer up to the present she has not returned mihayas was therefore alone in the world with no protection but that of god and no guide but his own will two the pious reader need not fancy that pacorito was in the least daunted or disturbed at finding himself alone not he in his brief career he had had occasion to study the ways of the world and he knew a thing or two about the fraud and vanity of life he filled himself with energy and confronted the situation like a hero he was on excellent terms with numerous persons of his age and quality and even with bearded men who seemed disposed to protect him so by dint of push he got the better of his sad conditions he sold matches newspapers and lottery tickets three branches of industry which if intelligently pursued might certainly be productive of honest gain and so it happened that pacorito was never in want of a penny or so to assist a friend in need or to treat his acquaintances of the fair sex he was spared all domestic worries all household cares and exigencies his palaces were the prado in summer and the portals of the casa panaderia in winter by nature he was frugal and wisely inimical to the pomps of the world he slept anywhere ate whatever he found just as the birds do and suffered no anxiety on this score because of the religious submissiveness that filled his soul and his instinctive faith in that mysterious providence which deserts no one great or small one might be apt to conclude from this that mahayas was happy it seems natural enough that he should be he was deprived of relatives it is true but he enjoyed the precious boon of liberty as his wants were few the fruit of his labour kept him in plenty and he was not indebted to any one for anything his sleep was disturbed neither by cares nor ambition he was poor but contented his body was destitute but his spirit was rich in peace well in spite of this my lord pacorito was unhappy why because he was in love over ears in love as they commonly say 
yes sir this pacarito who was so small so ugly so poor and so alone loved inexorable law of life which permits no being whatever his condition to elude the despotic yoke of love with a mind free from impure thoughts our hero loved he loved with a dreamer's idealism yet at times he felt that ardent fire which set the blood boiling like the very devil in his veins the object of his thoughts aroused every variety of sensation in his volcanic heart he had days of sweet platonicism like petrarch and then again he was warm and impetuous like romeo and who pray had inspired pacorito with this terrible passion no less a person than a great lady who wore silk and velvet gowns beautiful furs and gold eyeglasses a great lady with flaxen ringlets that fell on her alabaster neck and who had been known to sit at the piano for three days in succession three who was this celestial beauty and how came mihayas to make her acquaintance this is how it happened our hero's mercantile operations extended over a great part of one of the streets opening into the puerta del sol a busy thoroughfare lined with beautiful shops the show windows of which are resplendent at night and display all the marvels of industry one of these stores which is kept by a german is always full of exquisite trifles and novelties it is the great bazaar of childhood both juvenile and adult during the carnival it is hung with grotesque masks in holy week it is filled with figures of saints and pious images at christmas and new years it is all bethlehem mangers and christmas trees laden with toys and magnificent presents Pacarito's mad passion began when the german filled his show-window with the most enchanting collection of richly dressed ladies that parisian fashion could conceive almost all of them were two feet tall their faces were of highly refined wax and the crimson of fresh roses could not equal the glow of their chaste cheeks their immobile eyes of blue glass shone with a splendour surpassing that of the human pupil their hair of softest crimped wool could with greater justice be compared to the rays of the sun than that of most great ladies and the strawberries of april the cherries of may and the coral from the deep seas were ugly things compared to their lips their good breeding and deportment were such that they never stirred from the spot where they were placed they merely creaked the wooden joints of their knees their shoulders and their elbows when the german sat them at the piano or made them raise their eyeglasses to look out into the street otherwise they were no trouble whatever and no one had ever heard them say this month is mine there was one among them what a woman she was the tallest the most lithe the most beautiful the most sympathetic the most elegant in a word the greatest lady of them all she was no doubt a person of high degree judging from her grave grand manner and that patronizing air which was so becoming to her grand woman she is the paragon thought pacarito the first time he saw her and for a whole hour he stood before the show window rooted to the sidewalk Four pacarito had reached the state of emotional excitement the delirium peculiar to heroes of romance his brain boiled writhing stinging serpents wound themselves around his heart his mind was a volcano he despised life he longed for death he soliloquized he gazed at the moon he soared beyond the seventh heaven many a time had night overtaken him in a melancholy ecstasy before the show-window oblivious to everything oblivious to his very business interests it might be well to state at once that our good mihayas met with no rebuff i mean that his mad passion was to a certain extent reciprocated who can measure the intensity of a heart of tow and sawdust the world is full of mysteries science is vain and will never penetrate the depths of things who will draw the line defining the exact sphere of the inanimate 
where does the inanimate begin down with the pedant who stands before a stone or a cork and says thou hast no soul god alone knows the true dimensions of the invisible limbo wherein rests all that which does not love pacorito was quite sure of having stirred his lady's pulse she gazed at him and without moving a muscle opening her mouth or winking an eye she spoke soulful things to him now sweet as hope now sad like the prescience of tragic events this naturally fanned the flame that burned in our friend's heart and his daring imagination conceived dramatic plans of conquest and even of matrimony one night the faithful lover repaired punctually to the tryst the lady was seated at the piano her hands suspended over the keys and her divine face turned to the street the ragamuffin and she exchanged glances and what passion what idealism in that look sighs and tender thoughts were following one another when an event occurred which clipped the thread of this sweet communion and shattered at one blow the happiness of both lovers it was one of those sudden catastrophes that inflict a mortal wound and lead to suicides tragedies and other lamentable things a hand proceeding from the interior of the shop was thrust into the show window it caught the lady by the belt and disappeared with her within pacorito's amazement was followed by a sense of misery so intense that he longed to die there and then to see the object of his love vanish as though she had been swallowed by the insatiable grave to be unable to rescue her or follow her were it to be to the bottomless pit ah here was a blow which was beyond human endurance mihayas was about to drop on the sidewalk he thought of suicide he invoked god and the devil they have sold her he muttered hoarsely and he pulled his hair and scratched his face and kicked and as he did so he dropped his matches his lottery tickets and his newspapers worldly interests you are not worth a sigh five after a time when he had recovered from his violent emotion he glanced toward the interior of the store and saw two or three grown persons and several little girls talking with the german one of these little girls held in her arms the lady of his thoughts he felt like rushing upon them frantically but he forbore for it occurred to him that his appearance was not in his favour and that there would be every chance of his getting a sound drubbing and being handed over to the police he stood rooted to the threshold meditating upon the horrors of the slave trade upon this heinous tyrolis institution wherein a few dollars decided the fate of honest creatures exposing them to the savage destructiveness of ill-bred children human nature appeared to him in all its baseness those who had purchased the lady left the shop and entered a luxurious carriage and how they laughed the wretches even the wee fellow the most petted and spoiled of them all no doubt took the liberty of pulling the unfortunate doll by the arms although he had the greatest quantity of toys appropriate to his age and for his own exclusive enjoyment the grown persons too seemed satisfied with the new acquisition while the footman stood by to receive orders pacorito who was a person of heroic and daring resolutions conceived the idea of swinging behind the carriage this he did with that agility peculiar to the ragamuffin when he wishes to take a ride across the city stretching his neck to the right he saw the arm of the lady who had been sacrificed to lucre sticking out of the window this rigid arm and its pink fist spoke forcibly to his imagination calling to him through the rumble of the wheels save me save me my pacarito six under the archway of the great dwelling before which the carriage stopped pacarito's illusion vanished a servant informed him that if he soiled the flagstones with his muddy feet he would have his backbone broken mihayas retired before this overwhelming argument but from that instant his heart was filled with a scorching thirst for vengeance his fiery nature impelled him forward into the night of the unforeseen into the arms of his fortune 
his soul was well fitted to noisy and dramatic adventure so what should he do but make a compact with those who removed the garbage from the house where his beloved lived enslaved and by this means which may not have been altogether poetical but which revealed the shrewdness of a heart as big as the top of a pine-tree he found his way into the palace how his heart throbbed as he went up the stairs and into the kitchen the thought of being near her confused him so that more than once his basket fell from his hand spilling its contents down the steps but nowhere could he see his lady-love he often heard the screams of children at play but nothing more the servants because he was so little and so ugly played many a trick upon him one alone who seemed more compassionate than the rest gave him sweetmeats one cold morning the cook through pity or through sheer wickedness perhaps gave him a draught of wine that was as biting and fiery as the very devil the ragamuffin felt a warm and delightful current run through his whole body while hot vapours rose to his head his legs trembled his limp arms fell beside him in voluptuous abandon a stream of playful laughter rose from his heart and gurgled from his lips and pacorito held on to the wall with both hands to keep from falling a vigorous kick somewhat modified his mirth and he left the kitchen his brain was topsy-turvy he had no idea where his steps were leading him he ran along staggering and laughing first over cold tiles then over smooth boarded floors then over soft warm carpets suddenly he caught sight of an object on the floor he stood petrified for a second and then he uttered a roar of pain and fell upon his knees heavens there stretched before him like a corpse with a crack through her alabaster brow a broken arm and dishevelled locks was the lady of his thoughts for a moment our hero was speechless his voice was smothered in his throat he pressed the cold body to his heart and covered it with burning kisses the lady's eyes were open and she gazed with melancholy tenderness at her faithful lover for she lived in spite of her wounds pacorito knew it by the singular light of her calm blue eyes that emitted little flames of love and gratitude signora let me know who reduced you to this sad condition he exclaimed in pathetic and anguished tones his pain was soon followed by a burst of rage and he thought of the great revenge he would take upon the perpetrators of the iniquity just then he heard footsteps approaching so he tucked the lady under his arm and started on a run he went down the stairs crossed the court and broke into the street he could scarcely be said to be running he was flying like a bird that has stolen grain heard a report and feeling itself unhurt determines to put the greatest possible distance between itself and the gun he ran past one two three ten streets till he thought he was far enough away to be in safety and then stopped to rest laying the object of his insensate tenderness upon his knees seven night came upon him and he welcomed with delight the soft shadows that hid the daring act and protected his love he examined her injured body carefully and concluded that the wounds were not serious although one might have seen her brain had she had one through the opening in her skull and the sawdust of her heart poured out in copious streams through the rents in her breast her gown was in shreds and part of her hair had been dropped in the hasty flight his soul overflowed with sorrow when he realized that he had not the money with which to meet the situation as he had given up his business naturally his pockets were empty and a loved woman particularly if she is in poor health is a source of unlimited expense mihayas laid his hand sadly upon that part of his rags wherein he had habitually kept his coin but nothing was there at this critical moment thought he when i need a house a bed a world of doctors and surgeons an abundance of food a bright fire and a dressmaker i have nothing nothing but as he was very tired he laid his head upon his idol's body and fell asleep like an angel 
then a great miracle took place the lady began to revive and finally rising to her feet showed pacorrito a smiling countenance the wound had disappeared from her noble brow her lithe form was without a rent her gown neat and whole on her curled and perfumed locks she wore a coquettish hat trimmed with minute flowers in a word she stood before him in all her beauty just as he had known her in the show window mihayas was dazzled stupefied dumb he fell on his knees and worshipped her as people do a divinity then she took the ragamuffin by the hand and in a voice clear pure and sweeter than the song of the nightingale she said to him pacarito follow me i want to show you my gratitude and tell you of the sublime love with which you have inspired me you have been loyal constant generous heroic you have rescued me from the power of those vandals that tortured me you deserve my heart and my hand come follow me do not be foolish do not think you are inferior to me because you are in rags mihayas gazed at the lady's elegant luxurious attire and said sadly my lady where can i go in this dress the lady did not answer she merely led pacorrito by the hand into a mysterious region of shadows the ragamuffin soon found himself in a grand parlour brilliantly illumined and filled with beautiful objects the first moment of bewilderment passed he distinguished a thousand different figures and statuettes like those that people the shop in which he had seen his beloved for the first time what greatly surprised him was to see all the fine ladies who in shimmering gowns had occupied the show window with his friend come forth to meet them his lady accepted their homage with grave and ceremonious courtesy she seemed to belong to a higher caste than they her queenly manner her proud though not haughty bearing suggested dominion she immediately presented pacorrito for his part he was much confused and grew redder than a poppy when the princess taking his hand said allow me to present to you the senor don pacorrito de las mihayas who will honour us with his presence to-night the wings of his heart drooped as they say when he compared the luxury that surrounded him with his own poverty his rags his bare feet his torn trousers upheld by a single suspender and his coat-sleeves cut off at the elbow i can divine your thoughts said the princess aside your dress is not the most appropriate for a celebration like this as a matter of fact you are not presentable signora that deuced tailor of mine stammered mihayas has been false to his word and never mind we will dress you here said the noble lady the valets in this strange mansion were tiny and very comical monkeys we parrots of the kind known as paticos acted as pages to say nothing of a great number of paper birds they immediately set to work to repair as far as was possible pacorrito's unfortunate appearance they slipped his feet into a pair of tiny gilded match-boxes that made the most stylish boots they cut a neckcloth for him out of half a little red paper lantern and turned an osier flower-pot into a sort of pastoral hat which they trimmed elaborately with flowers as pacorrito had never been decorated they took a metal plate from an elegant kepi and hung it around his neck by way of a decoration and also a match-box which was round and looked like a watch and the cut-glass stopper of a small bottle of perfumery the paper birds conceived the happy thought of putting an ivory paper cutter in his belt to figure as a sword or dagger thanks to these and numerous other inventions for concealing his tatters our friend looked so handsome that no one would have recognized him as he caught sight of himself in the mirror top of a work-box he swelled with pride he was radiant eight the ball now began a number of canaries from their respective cages sang waltzes and habaneras the cornets and clarionets too were very skilful in pressing their keys all by themselves the violins pinched their own strings 
and the trumpets blew into each other Mihailas thought this music was entrancing it is unnecessary to say that the princess danced with him the other ladies found partners among the officers of the army and the sovereigns who had left their horses outside among these were prince bismarck the emperor of germany and napoleon mihailas was beside himself with pride and excitement it would be impossible to describe the emotions of his soul as he dashed into the dizzy whirls of the waltz with his beloved in his arms her soft breathing and an occasional stray lock of her golden hair caressed his cheek tickling him gently and producing a strange intoxication a loving glance or a little sigh of fatigue would every now and then put a climax to his madness suddenly the monkeys appeared and announced supper this caused a great commotion Miaias rejoiced greatly for with no prejudice to the spiritual character of his love the poor little fellow was very hungry nine the dining hall was superb and the table exquisite the china was of the very finest manufactured for dolls and a multitude of bouquets showed their colours and scattered their fragrance from egg-stands and thimbles pacarito sat at the princess's right they began to eat the parrots and paper birds waited upon them with such order and rapidity that they seemed like soldiers drilling before their general the dishes were delicious everything was raw or at all events cold Mihailas was rather pleased with the supper at first but he was soon surfeited the menu was as follows bits of sponge cake turkey smaller than birds which one could swallow at a mouthful gilt heads no bigger than almonds a rich supply of hemp seed a pate of bird seed a la canaria bread crumb a la perdona a fricassee of pheasant's eyes with a sauce of wild mulberries a salad of moss delicious sweetmeats and every possible variety of fruit harvested by the parrots from the tapestries where they were embroidered the melons being as small as grapes and the grapes as small as lentils during the supper the company chattered ceaselessly all but Bihayas, who being short of wit sat there and said never a word he was confused in the presence of so many gold-corded and uniformed generals he was amazed too at finding so much loquacity and frolicsomeness in these great men who had stood stiff and dumb in the show window as though they were made of clay the one known as bismarck in particular never stopped to draw breath he said the wildest things imaginable pounded the table with his fist and threw bread balls at the princess he flung his arms about most marvellously just as though a string were attached to their hinges and somebody under the table had hold of it what fun i am having said the chancellor my dear princess when a man spends his life adorning a mantelpiece in the cheerful company of a clock a bronze figure and a pot of begonias he really needs recreation and at a festival like this he lays in a supply of mirth for the year ah happy a thousand times happy they whose only duty consists in adorning mantelpieces said the lady in melancholy tones it may be wearisome but you do not at least suffer as we do we whose lives are a prolonged martyrdom we the toys of the small men it would be impossible for me to make you understand prince bismarck what we suffer when one pulls our right arm another our left when this one cracks our head that one quarters us or leaves us in the water to soak or rips us open to find out what is inside of us i can imagine it said the chancellor opening his arms and clapping them together several times how unfortunate said espatero and two of the emperors at once i was the least unfortunate of all said the lady for i found a friend and protector in the valorous and faithful mihailas who managed to save me from the barbarous torture pacarito blushed to the very roots of his hair valorous and faithful repeated all the dolls in admiring chorus 
and therefore to-night when our genius creator permits us to come together for this great celebration i chose to honour him by bringing him with me and offering him my hand as a sign of alliance and reconciliation between the lineage of dolls and that of well-bred compassionate children Ten. at this prince bismarck looked at pacorito with an expression of such malignity and sarcasm that our illustrious hero was filled with wrath at the same instant this wretch of a chancellor aimed a bread-ball at mihayas and fired it so accurately that the bridegroom came near being blinded for life but mihayas was a prototype of prudence and circumspection so he controlled his feelings and was silent the princess threw him a glance of love and gratitude what fun i am having repeated the chancellor clapping his wooden hands together before it is time to resume our place beside the clock and listen to its unceasing tic-tac let us fathom the depths of pleasure and intoxication let us be happy if the signor pacarito would favour us by calling the daily paper we might laugh a little the signor de mihayas said the princess kindly did not come here to make us laugh but there is no reason why we should not enjoy hearing him call out the paper or even the matches if he is willing to do so the ragamuffin could find no words with which to answer his beloved he was sorely incensed at the proposition which he judged to be a fling at his dignity and decorum let him dance shouted the chancellor impertinently let him dance on the table and if he refuses to do so i move that he be stripped of the fine clothes we dressed him in and be left ragged and barefooted as he was when he came mihayas felt all his blood rush to his heart he was blind with rage do not be cruel my dear prince said the princess smiling leave him to me i will take it upon myself to dispel the storm that is rising within our good mihayas here a loud peal of laughter greeted this reply and all the dolls and the most celebrated generals and emperors of the world simultaneously fell to pounding one another's heads like the punch and judy puppets make him dance make him call matches they clamoured mihayas felt faint the sentiment of dignity was so powerfully developed in him that he would have died rather than have gone through the suggested degradation he was just about to reply when the malignant chancellor pulling a long thin straw from a work-basket and wetting the end of it in his mouth drove it into pacarito's ear with such a quick movement that the latter did not realize the familiarity of the act until he had suffered the nervous shock produced by tricks of this sort blind with rage he put his hand to his belt and drew the paper-cutter the lady shrieked and the princess fainted but the enraged mihayas far from being pacified by this seemed to be growing more and more infuriated and rushing upon his insolent adversary he began to deal blows right and left the air was filled with yells threats and imprecations the parrots croaked and the very birds moved their paper tails in signs of panic nobody laughed now at the daring mihayas a few moments later the chancellor might have been seen going about gathering up his arms and legs a strange case which cannot be explained and all the emperors were noseless they gradually however with a little glue and a great deal of innate skill mended one another a rare advantage this of puppet surgery the princess having recovered from her swoon through the virtue of smelling salts administered by her pages in a filbert shell called the ragamuffin aside and leading him to her private apartments spoke as follows eleven most illustrious mihayas what you have just done far from lessening my love for you has only increased it for you have given evidence of indomitable valour by your easy triumph over this swarm of scoffing puppets the most despicable class of beings on earth the tender sentiments that bind me to you move me to propose that you become my husband with no further delay pacarito fell on his knees as soon as we are married the emperors and chancellors will all venerate you as they do me for i must tell you that i am queen of this division of the world 
my titles are not usurped they are transmitted by the divine law of puppets established by the supreme genius that created us and governs us my lady mihailyev said or tried to say my happiness is so great that i cannot express it very well then said the lady with great majesty since you are willing to become my husband and consequently prince and lord of this puppet kingdom i must inform you that in order to do so you will have to renounce your human personality i do not exactly grasp your majesty's meaning said the ragamuffin you belong to the human race i do not our natures being different we cannot unite there is but one way give up your humanity it is the easiest thing in the world believe me it is only necessary that you will it now answer me pacorito son of man will you be a puppet the peculiar nature of this request set the ragamuffin to thinking for a few seconds and what does this thing of being a puppet consist in you will be like me our nature is perhaps nearer perfection than yours we are to all appearances devoid of life but we live believe me to the imperfect senses of man we lack movement words affection but this is far from being the case you have had an opportunity of judging how we move how we speak and how we feel our fate for the present at least is not a very happy one we are the toys of your children and even your men but as a compensation for this disadvantage we are eternal eternal yes we live for ever when these wicked children of yours break us we rise with a new life out of our destruction and are born anew describing a mysterious and everlasting circle from the shop to the children from them to the tyrolese factory and then to the shop again through the ages everlasting through the ages everlasting repeated mihailyev absorbed it is not always rose-colour with us but on the other hand you see we do not know death and then our genius creator permits us to meet at certain great festivals to celebrate the glory of our race as we have done to-night we cannot elude the laws of our being it is not given us to enter the reign of humanity although men can easily enter ours and in fact have very often been known to become puppets a most extraordinary thing exclaimed pacorito full of amazement you know the requirements of puppet initiation i have nothing more to say our dogmas are very simple now meditate upon it and answer my question will you be a doll the princess's attitude was that of a priestess of antiquity pacorito was captivated i want to be a doll declared the ragamuffin resolutely the princess then proceeded to trace diabolical characters in the air and to utter great words which pacorito had never heard before and which were neither latin chinese nor chaldean he concluded that they were tyrolese when this was consummated the lady threw her arms around mihailya saying now you are my husband i have the power of marrying and also of receiving neophytes into our great law my darling little prince may you be blessed through time everlasting and the whole court of figures entered singing through time everlasting to the accompaniment of canaries and nightingales Twelve they all promenaded through the parlours in couples mihailyev gave his arm to his royal consort what a pity said she that our hours of pleasure should be so brief soon we shall have to return to our places his serene highness mihailyev from the moment of his transformation had begun to experience the queerest sensations the strangest of these consisted in his having lost the sense of taste and the notion of food all he had eaten lay within him as though his stomach had been a basket containing a thousand pasteboard viands which he did not digest which had no substance weight taste or nourishment moreover he was no longer master of his movements and was compelled to keep time when he walked which was a difficult thing to do he felt himself growing hard as though he were being turned to bone wood or clay he thumped himself and behold his body resounded like porcelain 
his clothes too had grown hard and were in every respect precisely like his body when he found himself alone with his little wife and clasped her to his bosom he experienced no human or divine sensation of pleasure nothing but the harsh shock of two hard cold bodies he kissed her cheek it was frozen in vain did his hungry spirit call upon nature nature in him was what it is in a piece of pottery he felt his heart throbbing like the machinery of a watch his thoughts alone survived the rest was all unfeeling matter the princess seemed very happy what is the matter my love said she observing pacarito's expression of distress i am weary bored bored to death my dear said the lover gaining assurance you will get accustomed to it oh happy hours if this lasted much longer we could not endure it does your highness call this happiness observed mihaius what coldness what emptiness what rigidity the aftertaste of human things still lingers in your soul and you are still a slave to the views of your depraved human senses pacarito i shall have to implore you to control these paroxysms or you will be the demoralization and destruction of every living doll life life blood heat shouted mihaius in despair gesticulating like a maniac what is happening to me the princess clasped him to her bosom and kissing him with her red waxen lips exclaimed you are mine for ever for ever through time everlasting just then they heard a great commotion and the sound of many voices crying it is time it is time the clock struck twelve and all had disappeared princess palace dolls and emperors pacarito was left alone thirteen he was left alone in the most complete darkness he tried to scream but he was voiceless he made frantic attempts to move but he could not he had turned to stone he waited in anguish day dawned at last and pacarito had resumed his old appearance but strange to say he was all of one colour and apparently all of one substance his hands his arms his rags his hair and even the newspapers which he held in his hand there is no doubt about it said he i have turned into a stone before him he saw a great sheet of plate glass with some letters on it running backward around him was a multitude of statuettes and fancy ornaments horror i must be in the show window a clerk took him carefully in his hands and having dusted him put him back in his place his serene highness looked down upon the pedestal on which he stood and saw a card with the figures twelve dollars upon it good heavens i am worth a treasure that at least partially consoles me and the people stopped on the other side of the plate glass to admire the wonderful bit of clay statuary representing a ragamuffin selling matches and newspapers everybody praised the artist and laughed at the droll expression and bumbling figure of the great mihaius while he in the inmost recesses of his clay repeated in anguish a puppet a puppet for ever through time everlasting End of story five.